the challenges facing the payment sector are significant, with fast-paced technology fueling evolution to meet increasing customer demands while operating in a highly regulated environment. So what does it take to have a thriving and stable business operation in an environment defined by complexity? Well, to explore these issues, we're joined by Christian Stolka, head of Global Financial Institutions, Non-Bank Financial Institutions and Governments, Global Payment Solutions at Bank of America. Welcome, Christian. Now, Beijing is one of the world's great commerce centers. Curious how you are characterizing what the state of commerce and finance here from your global perspective. So, first of all, thank you for having me. It's very exciting to be here in uh, Beijing and uh, in China, uh, one of our largest markets in Asia. Um, look, I think if I look back and reflect on where we've come from a year ago in Toronto, now here in Asia, Generally, the world of commerce and trade is quite healthy. Um, we've come of a uh, rate rising cycle into a more normalized uh, cycle now, but the intensity of trades and the intensity of corporate activity globally is very intense, and in particular here in Asia, uh, we see um, uh, people retaking CapEx investment, um, and, and it's a very healthy environment. On the other hand, uh, I would say one theme that we've seen last year is a theme of rising complexity of doing business, right? So you have complexity in terms of politics and geopolitics, mm -hmm. you have complexity of decoupled economic growth across different uh, regions and continents, um, and you have increased regulatory complexity in complying with all the rules and regs in the different markets, and in particular for a global bank operating in uh, you know, over 50 markets around the world in transaction banking, uh, it has not become simpler to do business. You, continue, you need to continue to be on your mark and understanding, um, you know, and keep keeping your customer in mind, understanding where you want to grow and where you want to invest, and keep on that agenda. And uh, business continues to be very complex to manage. We're told that technology is here to make our lives easier year on year. Can't technology help in this uh, instance? Is anything becoming less complex as we go? Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to technology because I think technology is a is is uh, is a means to an end the end is satisfying the customer mm -hmm. and the consumer right um, i would say a couple of things have become a little bit less complex i'd say back in the in our home markets in the americas um, the, the the financial markets from a year ago if you think about the regional banking crisis that has normalized a bit uh, rates have come down so access to liquidity is is becoming easier um, people are retaking investment gdp growth is is decent um, so I think from that perspective, um, the, the economic environment is a bit more stable, right? Uh, we also see a little bit of the uh, Basel III endgame being postponed for after the election. So, but the, the expectation is that the regulatory requirement around um, capital and liquidity will be a little bit easier for, for the banking sector. So those are some of the things that have simplified, right? But I think complexity uh, continues in the technology spend, if you think about that, right? So um, banks are obviously, transaction banks in particular, are having to spend enormous amount of money into three areas mm -hmm. of technology, right? So on one hand, you have to continue investing in your regulatory compliance around the world, right? Think about all the real-time payment networks that you have to be compliant with in the multiple markets where you have clients, right? Where you're following your corporates throughout the world. So that's, that's one base investment. Secondly, you need to continue investing in your capacity so you can accommodate continuous growth of the economy, continuous growth in transaction volume, and volatility in the markets, right? Because uh, there, there continues to be high volatility towards uh, certain in, in the cycle, through the cycle. And, and then thirdly, you need to continue innovating for your customer because your customer doesn't rest. He or she <laughs> have continued expectation, rising expectations. So, I think balancing those three tiers of technology investment has continued to be very challenging for all banks. I mean, that's quite, uh, that's, those are quite the parameters in terms of challenges. So what advice would you give companies then who are looking to invest in technology given, given those challenges? Yeah, I think, I think you need to have a clear roadmap. Uh, first of all, focus on certain customer segments and certain geographies and products that you think you're really good at, where you think you're going to satisfy the evolving needs of your clients, right? That's, I think, without that, no corporate, no bank can survive. Secondly, then, have a clear roadmap and be consistent in your 
uh, deployment of technology resources against it through, let's say, a three plus year cycle. And then thirdly is experimentation, right? There's so much new technology to be deployed. I heard the former colleague here talking about AI. Um, you need to get smart about it, and the only way of getting smart about it is by experimentation. So you need to stay closely aligned with your partners. You think about who you're going to partner with in that journey, in that technology journey, and, uh, and start experimenting. Mm -hmm. But stay the roadmap on where you want to be in five years in terms of the customer segments you want to serve and the needs you want to satisfy. Mm. I'm sure most people's roadmaps growth will be uh, a, a huge component. So let's turn our attention to growth strategies. Where are companies looking for growth at the moment? Yeah, look, I think um, I talked earlier about uh, retake of CapEx. I think uh, if you look at our corporate uh, client set, for example, here in Asia, um, there's clearly a lot to say about um, restructuring supply chains, uh, entering new markets. Uh, we are, for example, very active in uh, India and in Mexico, but also in China and, and Southeast Asia. Um, you clearly need to evolve and follow your corporates into those markets and make sure you're providing continuous banking services no matter where our corporates are and where their clients are. So you really need to understand where your corporate client set is heading and have solutions, banking solutions, financing solutions, and trade finance solutions that follow that client set. You know, when we think about Cybos, collaboration is a constant theme. What are you, what are you looking to this year? What does collaboration this year mean to you? Yeah, look, I think um, Cybos has always been purely about collaboration, right? The, the whole transaction banking industry is by definition an ecosystem of firms mm -hmm. providing services to each other, collaborating to and, and growing mm -hmm. with each other. So I think a good example is, um, a really good example is the collaboration between traditional banks and fintechs, right? So if you, if you look at it from a perspective of a transaction banker, um, the fintech sector is extremely important there. On one hand, there are important service providers and infrastructure providers for us. They provide solutions into the sector, or either as a utility or bilaterally into a certain bank, right? Secondly, there are our clients, because we're providing the, the last mile exit to the financial system. We're providing um, financing needs and corporate banking facilities and, and uh, advice. And then thirdly, they compete with us, uh, fintechs compete with the traditional banks, but they have made the banking sector much more agile and better at deploying technology. So it's really, I would bring it back to the phrase, it's an ecosystem and it's synergetic across. So we, we believe that those are some of the examples where collaboration is really very vibrant mm -hmm. and continues to be vibrant, yeah. has not changed. Yeah, for sure. Now the success of every industry relies on the talent that is coming through and driving that forward. Uh, the Swift community has a fantastic, great rising star program, Indeed. the Star uh, Scholars. Uh, and it's obviously wonderful to see the new talent coming through year on year. But what would your advice be to, to, to young people coming into the financial industry uh, at, this, at this crucial time? Yeah, first of all, I want to say um, new talent, talent acquisition into the sector is extremely important for the banking sector, in particular for transaction banking. Um, for new talents, uh, I would say um, banking is a very specialized sector, right? People generally become specialists and very good at one vertical product or, or thing that they do. I think the future of talent development is going to be more horizontal. Mm. People will have to bring much more in their baggage to be successful bankers. They have to be advisors, they have to be technicians, they have to be subject matter experts, but they also have to be very agile in deploying technology tools and mm -hmm. data sets mm -hmm. and deploying all of that as an advice set to their clients. That will make a successful banker. So I think talent needs to be more generalist mm. and less specialized in the future and be very agile in acquiring new technologies and new tools and experimenting with new tools and bringing those to, jo to the yeah. job and deploying it vis-a-vis -vis the client. Does that also include data analytics? Absolutely. Yeah. I believe that, for example, in my job, uh, which is uh, client relationship management and sales, I think this job will, will fundamentally change with the deployment of more data and more access to client data. Think about the enrichment of payment data and the amount of data that transaction banks have about their client. If you as a sales per person are able to bring, to understand the data about your client, make sense out of that and bring this as advice to your client with solutions, that will make a successful transaction bank of the future.
It's all about the future of finance. It was really good to get insights from you. That's Christian Stolka, head of global financial institutions, non-bank financial institutions and governments, global payment solutions at Bank of America. Christian, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.